Hey guys, I am just transitioning our homeschool area from kindergarten to first grade and I thought I would just show our space because we actually don't have a very large school space and um, I've gotten some really good organizing tips from other people so I've been implementing them for the last two years and I love them so I thought I would just show you what we have and show you some of the tips um, and tricks that we use that I've really been liking in case um, anybody else needs an idea. So we do not have a homeschool room. We just have a very small homeschool space. We do our work at the table and I keep all of our school supplies for the current year in this dresser, which I found on the side of the road. <laughs> yes, uh, the top two drawers were missing. So we just put in a shelf and it holds these bins. What are they? 12 by 12 perfectly. So starting at the top in this bin, I keep all the visuals that I use the most. So for first grade, that's phonics, things, games. Um, can you see in there? All these other little ones for numbers and things like that. So those all go in here, easy to access. And then in here, this year, I'm keeping all of the teacher guides and curriculum guides and answer keys and all that. For anybody who's curious, we use Abeka. Um, so everything you see here is Abeka. Um, then in the first drawer, I keep my daughter's school papers. This is one tip that I love. It is kind of a lot of work, but it is worth it. So I just print out a copy of our family calendar. And for my lesson plans, I just write in the lessons that I want to do each day. Then I collate all the school papers and paper clip them together. We do double lessons for the first few months because our schedule is a little bit different. Um, but anyway, so the lesson numbers are on the post-its and the paper clip together. So if we're doing school, um, in the beginning, we only do school Monday through Thursday. So I just take out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I keep them all together in a clipboard, and then that's all the lesson planning I have to do for the week, aside from what I want to write on the board. So this folder contains all of September's work, and then the next one is October, and it goes all the way through. We finish mid-May. And so all of my lesson planning is done, all the papers I need are done, so I don't have to save all of the workbooks, and I don't have to take out all the workbooks, tear out every page, put them all back, just do it again tomorrow. I get it all done in one shot. And Abeka actually offers certain workbooks unbound, so you don't even have to tear the pages out. They're already torn out for you. You just have to sort them, which is really, really nice. So anyways, on this side is all of her school papers and then her spelling book. And for her school box, I just keep it simple. The bare essentials because it's hard for my girl to keep everything clean and organized. So I try to make it as easy for her as possible. So I just keep two pencils, an eraser, one pair of scissors. And this year I'm using twisty crayons because I've realized I hate, hate the little bits of crayon wrapper that get all over the place. So I am never buying regular crayons again. Um, so this is what we have. The twisty crayons and that's it I will probably throw a glue stick in there for art projects so that way everything she could possibly need for the day is all in one box that just snaps shut I don't have to worry about her losing a lid or anything like that um, I do have a son who's three so I did order a pre-k workbook for him so that he can have some things to do and again I tore out all the pages so I, if he's into it that day I take one out if he's not I don't it's really not a big deal to me um, and then underneath here I have the social studies books that she'll use and the readers. I haven't actually looked at the curriculum yet to see which one she'll need first. So whichever one she'll need first, I'll put at the top and the rest will just stay underneath the pile until it's their turn. So that is the top drawer. Oops, hold on. Okay, um, so that's that. Oh, and I had my father-in-law build me this little divider in the middle for extra grippers and erasers. Um, for all the paper clips that I use to be put back there, my writing utensils, and then these washable dry erase markers. They're crazy art, so I don't have high hopes for them, but they had more colors than Crayola, so I got them. Um, in the second drawer, I have all of the other visuals, which is a lot for kindergarten and first grade. Um, you know, letter flashcards, edition flashcards, all the blends. These are... Do you guys remember these? Did you have these when you were in school? These little Judy clocks? Hopefully, you, this angle you can see everything okay. But anyway, so here's all the other visuals that I don't think 
I'll be using a lot. With the addition and subtraction families, I'll just take out the ones I need and keep those out until we go on to the next ones. So they'll be more easily accessible than having to take them out of the box every day. Um, I like things to be easy. And then in the bottom drawer, uh, like I said, my son is three, so I have some activities for him. A lot of these I just found actually in the Target dollar spot. And then these bags I got from Walmart in the school section last year. And they seem really sturdy, and I think they were only a dollar each. So this was too much to fit into one of these. Um, so that's all there. There's some little puzzles for him, some little activities. And then on this side is some things for Lily. So some pretend money to count. Um... These are actually really cool. They have one for every grade level, probably through middle school or something. They're little minds, brain building games. Um, some more realistic looking money. And then I have some um, like liquid measurement things in here. So these are more like Lily's side and then the rest of it's pretty much all for Lincoln. So that way when we're at the table, if he wants to be with us, I have a whole drawer full of stuff that's very easy for him to access. Um, I only have two kids. They're three years apart. So eventually, Lincoln will be homeschooled as well. Um, so somehow I'll have to adjust this for him. Um, like maybe empty out a drawer and put his school things in there. I'm not quite sure yet. So for those of you with larger families, I have no tips for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not, at least as far as organizing. The co-laying thing is awesome. But if your kids are older, they can tear out their own stuff. Um, okay, so the coolest thing I think about our school space is that um, because we don't have a school room, which I actually, I think if I had an extra room, I would love to have a school room because I was a teacher and I think it'd be very fun to set it all up, but we don't have an extra room in our house and I did not, I personally did not want to convert my dining room or any space where I am in all the time into a school area because I felt like it would be nagging me all the time. Like I would never feel like I was done with the school day. That's just my personality. So I wanted something that was concealed. So I put the dresser on felt pads and every day we open up school and our school room is actually hiding behind the dresser. And I realized when I looked at this today that I did not do anything with it after we finished our last lesson of school. So it's still set for me. I didn't even erase the board. That's how ready for summer we were around here. Um, okay, so on the back of the dresser, I just used a wood grain contact paper to make it look a little bit nicer. But we have our calendar, I have the alphabet, and at the very bottom here we have our weather temperature for the day. And, you know, of course, kindergarten, first grade, Lily thinks this is the this is the greatest thing. When she gets to move the room into the temperature, she thinks it is so cool. Um, that was actually an Abeka visual. I'm sure that you can just buy something like that somewhere, but I don't know where. Um, so anyway, so that's what we have directly behind the dresser. And then over here, I have a huge dry erase board or, you know, um, yeah, a dry erase board. So when I put up visuals, oh, it's magnetic. So I can either use magnets or I use the, you know, oops. Sorry, can you see this? Sticky tack, and it comes right off. I use washable dry erase markers, and um, down in this little thing that I got from TJ Maxx last year, I keep the extra calendar days and the other dry erase markers in our little American flag. Sorry, I hope you can see that. Um, so anyways, so when school is on, we open it up, we do our thing, and then when the day is over, I will, while she's cleaning up her papers and stuff, I will set up the board for the next day, and then when school's done, we close the dresser, and out of sight, out of mind. We all feel like we're done, and it's, you know, we can move on to the rest of our day. So anyways, that's just a few things we do that help our day go more smoothly. I would love to see other homeschool areas, so please, um... Tell me what you do. Show me pictures. I would love to see it. I love to get ideas to make our homeschooling day go more smoothly. So I hope that you are doing well. I wish you happy planning as summer is winding down. I hope that you get to enjoy these last little um, free days with your kids. And I hope you have a really great school year. See you soon.